box, something like that. Uh, he's got to attend to his daughter, as last time that situation kind of messed us up. That damn babysitter, as usually is the case. <laughs> Babysitter's wanted. Not for yeah, Jake Day, that's for me. But <laughs> anyway. We're laughing last time because as we're <laughs> setting up last week to get Jake Day in here, his, his baby, babysitter wasn't able to make it. So he's texting us and he goes, I can't leave my daughter. <laughs> like, yeah, man, we know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the problem with uh, texting is that you can't ever tell anybody's emphasis or context. Right, right. Context. You, you know always I mean? put in like the funniest notion that you think. Like you I pictured him like Liam head. Neeson. <laughs> <laughs> I fixed him like in a foxhole, and his like daughter's right there. He's like, I can't leave my daughter. Or she has like the cure, and then he's got to take her to the government building, or t I don't know. Like, there's some kind of. Yeah, uh, man. We know your daughter is <laughs> more important than a local radio show. But yeah. But is she? <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. So, yo, you were asking me before we went on air about Star Wars coming out. Oh, yeah. So, me and Bitman, I don't know if we have early screenings or what, but we're seeing it tomorrow night, 7 p.m., not midnight, like a bunch of Cretans. Yeah, I, I was really surprised about that. I thought that it was Dude, I was midnight. surprised, too. I went on there to buy midnight tickets, actually, and yeah. then when I went to the website, I was like, you can see it at 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. the you same sure night. You sure you got the right movie? Dude, I've checked it a hundred times. <laughs> Unless it's, uh, like, a, you know, there's two Star Wars, The Force Awakens coming out. Mm. Which there aren't, but dude, so how pumped are you? I'm pretty pumped. I am pretty pumped. Went back, rewatched all the old movies, rewatched four, five, and six, the Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. Do you have any idea like what the premise of this movie is? Like I know the time frame and all that, but I have no I, idea what's I've, gonna happen. I've I have no saw idea. as little information oh. as possible. Yeah. Oh like, shit. I forgot to banish that up. Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> I uh have a staph infection, folks, and I just looked down as I rubbed it against the, uh... It's pretty gross. Yeah, but it's, it's healing now, um... Still but I didn't bandage it up this morning. It's it's completely healed, pretty much. Just... Alright, no more staph talk. Back to Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have no idea what's up with this guy with, like, the red sword lightsaber thing. Why it even has, like, light protruding from the sides, like, the point of that. Yeah, I, I mean, it. here's the thing, man. This whole <laughs> thing seems like a giant money grab, and I feel like I'm getting shafted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I see you, like, I'm trying to stay positive. I'm really trying to stay positive about Star Wars, because I love Star Wars very, yeah, very much. sure do. It's been uh, a staple in my life since I was in preschool, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the more I think about it, the more I'm realizing that, you know, for the massive amount of money and collective wealth George Lucas has, I guess he never, he never uh, ceased to want to further that because he sold it to Disney, and now Disney had to pay so much for it that it seems as though they're cheapening his art mm -hmm. uh, by really like whoring it out to all kinds of different you know outlets. Like they're selling it in lots of car ads I've seen. They're yeah, selling it, you know Verizon. It's got the network. <laughs> into the it's the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you know I mean. Every time I hear the music and see, you know, like, spaceships flying through space, shooting each other, and hear the lasers, I do look at the TV and go, oh, is that a new Star Wars commercial I'm about to check out, you know? And then it's like a commercial. So, I don't know if that it's really a positive association. That was done in the early 2000s as well with those new movies. And I think those early 2000s movies were a, a money grab as well. I just was in kindergarten right. and I didn't realize it. I mean, do you like it now, looking back on it? Dude, we watched episode one last night, me and Brooke, and it was so bad. Really? <laughs> It was really that bad. Besides the Darth Maul scenes, everything was horrible. Hmm. Like, I just remember sitting there, like, Jar Jar Binks is unbearable. If I did not see that movie when I was in kindergarten, I probably would have been with everybody else and been jumping ship. Uh, you should know we go mean? to this movie? <laughs> yeah, we're definitely going to go, dude. 100%. Get my refund. <laughs> now nah, we're going. Yeah. Um, but, dude, Jar Jar Binks is, like, so bad as a character. <laughs> like, every scene, I'm what just like, why did he need to be in this movie? I don't understand. Yeah. And I was telling Brooke, I was like, okay, there's a lot of, like, um, uh, people that make claims against George Lucas about adding in things that don't need to be in his movies, right, you right. know? And it's, it, the more I watch them and see all these add-ins, I agree with them, like, that are 100% right. The movies hold up if you watch the 1970 versions without the digital re-release right, edits, right, you know? Right. Th then they're fine, but they're so hokey and stupid with that, and like, er, like Jordan was like, "This is pretty good technology for 1974," and I'm like, "No, that's that was added in. Don't worry." Like that was, uh, that's the <laughs> job of the hut is like talking to Han right, Solo right, and right. the kids. I'm like, I don't even know, or like you know, yeah, who knows what, what's been added? Probably. Yeah, it's now it's just such a it's such a blurred valley, of, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. of, Why do you think Jar Jar Binks is in there for like a? 
to kind of PG it down a little bit. I, I think I feel like he's in the. Uh, I feel the as though scenes. if I really think about it, and I know there's many different claims about what Jar Jar Banks is to symbolize or represent, but I think if I get down to it, he is supposed to kind of. Okay, this is supposed to be episode one, right? It's supposed to be episode one, meaning that people who haven't seen the original three, mm -hmm. they want to grab you and bring you into the into the fold, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like... They're trying to get the whole demographic. Yeah, and maybe Jar Jar Binks kind of represents, like, he plays the character. Or he or he plays the viewer it, as a character. Okay. So... For, I see what you're saying. He plays the viewer who doesn't really know what's going on <laughs> if he were to be in the story. I was talking to Brooke about this last night. I was like... A lot of people think that Jar Jar Binks is racist. They think that, like, George Lucas put him in there and that it's equivalent to that of a minstrel show and it's, like, completely, you know, like, old-time, you know, show, make fun of black people type thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now, I thought long and hard about this because... Is that documented? It said, like, blogs and stuff? And that well, was... I remember when the movie came out, there was huge backlash. I saw it on the news. Now, what does really? that mean? What does that mean? It means I... the media found a way to get people to... Right. To yell and complain about something, and they started poking at that wound. So, right, well, let's you know, poke at that. Wound. So let's let's figure it out. Right. So I was thinking about that last night. So I'm watching the movie, and I, as when I first saw it, I was like, I was a kid. Like I said, I was in kindergarten, so I had no idea about racism or anything like that. And I was just like, I don't really know what you guys talk about. This is Star Wars, a good movie. Shut up. You know, like, like I didn't know at all the all the makings of it. I just knew that it was Star Wars. I wanted to see it. You know. So people who think Jar Jar Binks is like meant to portray like black people or whatever, you know, like, th that's not, I feel like, entirely accurate. I see what they're saying, like, they're saying, like, oh, like, come on, like, you don't see that, like, you don't see the relation to, like, you know, the, the things well, that Well, what do they point out? They point out, like, how ham he is, how ham, hammed up he is, like, how uh -huh. over the top and, like, absolutely, like, you know, he's like, first of all, they point out the accent that is put in there, mm -hmm. that they say is meant to sound like a uneducated slave, right. that's right. what they say, like, right, and... His language is like supposed to be like an alien language, but I see what they're saying. Like mm -hmm. in the way that they, they make him, like the pattern, the rhythm of mm -hmm. his flow. Like mm -hmm. I see it's a derivative of something. Like mm -hmm. it could be an alien language, all, all you want to call it an alien language, but it was made from the mind of, you know, George Lucas, whoever wrote it, whatever. You know? A human. A human. <laughs> a human who has had these experiences, and it's a derivative of one of those human experiences. Yes. So, you know, that's to be up to debate. But what I think is that. When I was watching last night, I said to Brooke, uh, I told her that, I'm like, people think that this is racist, and like, what do you think? She goes, I don't know, I mean, I guess I can see it. And I was like, okay, well, what if I made this claim that Jar Jar Binks was to represent an uneducated viewer of Star Wars, somebody who's entering Star Wars naive to what, like, the structure of, like, the first four movies were in the 70s, right? And they're entering it now because it's episode one, maybe, like, five of their friends that had all seen the original movies were going, but they, the person was like... Oh, I'll go with you. Like it's the first movie, you know. Like I'll, like I'll, like uh -huh. I'll be up to speed, right. you know. So, Jar Jar Binks is putting all these precarious situations where he can't handle himself. He's like, you know, hanging off the tank as it's shooting. He's like, ah, like you know, right, like, freaking right. out. And he's like all over the top. And I think it's to kind of flash back to the viewer. Hey, look how ridiculous Jar Jar Binks is in this scene. He's not supposed to be here. He's just a simple gungan. He's, You're not supposed to be here. You know, it's, it's the first like, three you, no, or, no, 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 not like that. Not like that. Not like that. It's supposed to be like overemphasizing the heroicness of the characters, the main characters' actions, the protagonists. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be like, look at Jar Jar Binks. Like that is what you would be like if you were in this movie. Okay. General viewing Earthling populace. Like right, right. as silly as he, as we look at him, that's how these heroes, Ben Kenobi and Qui Gon Jinn, would look at you because you are just a viewer and you're not a Jedi and you're not a fantastic action figure and we're all just participating in this journey of watching the movie and being along for the adventure. Mm -hmm. So Jar Jar is a representation of like the citizens of that space like the 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 blue collar average working class like uneducated citizens of that time in space you know mm -hmm. not necessarily a reflection back of like american and you know cultural you know identity or whatever yeah uh <clears throat> movies definitely have a long standing history of kind of relating back to the the time period of which they originate from or even before that but it's very much uh too like too much thought process goes into these things sometimes. Sometimes it's just a just a Star Wars movie. Well, but, I'll tell you a little bit. Star Wars, like I said, it's a marketing monolithic empire. You know what I'm saying? It's a huge cash cow. So it 
in the same way you see these car commercials, the same way you see these Verizon commercials, you see the, sto the, the toys on the shelves at the store, in that same way, you see other people trying to get at the economy that is Star Wars. Mm -hmm. So they go, I'm going to make a news story about how because Darth Vader's lightsaber is red and Luke Skywalker's is blue, that is Hollywood liberalism imposing democratic Luke views. Luke Skywalker's is green. How dare When he you? becomes a Jedi Knight, but in the first movie, it's blue. Okay. So Just test it, bro. He goes, <laughs> he goes, uh... You know, people have said that. They've said that because they love the Jedi lightsabers are blue and the Sith are red, and that means that's a Democrat and Republican thing. Mm -hmm. And that's Hollywood, you know, yeah. Hollywood liberal media mm -hmm. just attacking the conservative man. <laughs> yeah. it's like, I remember they were going crazy with the uh, the Gogurts back yeah. in the day. It's like, you got a green Gogurt because you're a Luke. You know? Yeah. Even Yogurt's attacking Star Wars. Not attacking, but kind of latching on like a succubus. And the funny thing is, give me that money. <laughs> that if, if you want to look for symbolism in Star Wars, you know, the lamestream media's attempt to, you know, make red lightsabers Republican and blue lightsabers Democrat, that's such a lazy attempt. Yeah. There's so much more you could relate to it. Like, mm -hmm. you could be like, well, how about the uh, Galactic Empire represents the United States? Mm -hmm. And how about the Rebel Alliance represents. Um, a group of rebel terrorists uh, based on an old ancient religion that is dying off and being exterminated by the Galactic Empire. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. What's that sound like? <laughs> sounds like ISIS to me. <laughs> it sounds a lot like Luke Skywalker's organization uh, would be looked at by our country as... Oh, how dare you, sir. Che Guevara's how organization dare you, was looked sir. at and many other rebel We're gonna organizations. We're going to have to cut this. We're going to edit up this, this scene right here. Look, I am, <laughs> like, I am Luke Skywalker. You know what I mean? I was... I was I'm his, I'm his, He's my namesake, so it's like, I understand the way of the Jedi. And it's not that of ISIS, but I'm saying, like, if you looked at okay. it on paper, the plot line of Star Wars, mm -hmm. rebel religious group attacks On the, paper, you, you can know. construe anything. You know? Do you not agree? You don't think that that's, like, a parallel you draw? Listen, I'm just trying to walk a fine line here. I don't want to say anything about Luke being related to ISIS or something like that. <laughs> in, in, a the, crazy in, 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 in A New Hope, he says to Darth Vader, He's like, like they're all sitting around the table, like, you know, kind of like all the guys who are not wearing like Darth Vader outfits and then him, you know, uh -huh. and they're all back in like it's like normal, like, yeah, it's fine, it's General <laughs> Vader, yeah, whatever. Like, and he's like, he goes, uh, something, something, your ancient religion is dying and you are an idiot, Vader, don't put that false superstition at me. <laughs> and then like, he says that and Vader's just like, that's what he does, the choke. Right, like, right. Your lack of faith is disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Anything going on in the world these days besides Star Wars and ISIS? Star okay, that's, all, so, that's all it is these days, Star Wars and ISIS. Well, back to Star Wars. <laughs> I think that because Star Wars is like in is in a, a rejuvenation stage, it's about to like come back, and there's going to be three new movies, and it's going to be in the popular consciousness mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. I think that we can expect like a time of technological progress like we've never seen before. Really? It's just based oh, on... Oh, yeah, design. man. Star Wars brings progress. Because <laughs> think about it. You got everybody thinking about space, how cool it would be to be a Jedi and things like that. And people are going to look inward and be like, how can I be a Jedi? Can I meditate? Can I do spiritual practice? Can I do yoga? Can I do jujitsu? Can I do all of these things that will give me Jedi-like qualities, you know? Mm -hmm. And then everybody kind of gets into that rhythm and they're like, yeah, maybe I could too be a Jedi. And then, you know, people who see the spaceships and stuff, they're like little kids now. Just like Neil deGrasse Tyson can inspire little kids, Star Wars can inspire little kids to like want to work for NASA or something, you know? Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful hope. I like it's such it. a massive movement, I like and I really hope J.J. Abrams like remembers the sacredness of like the full circle that that Star, Star Wars creates with did its that, like storyline. That guy do Transformers, right? Uh, I don't think so. I think Tr Michael Bay did Transformers. Oh, J.J. <laughs> Abrams did. <laughs> didn't he do? Uh, I always mix up J.J. Abrams with M. Night Shyamalan. Mm. All those one letter twist. No, like one letter guys. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Michael C. Clark Douglas. Right, right, I don't right. know. But J.J. Abrams, he directed. I think he directed that show Heroes. What? And I think he directed Twenty Four. That's the guy that we have oh, doing Star it. Wars these days. The guy who did Heroes. I think it was a pretty acclaimed show. But what is J.J. Abrams <laughs> most known for? Nothing. Okay, J.J. Abrams was born in 1966 in New York City, and, okay, that's what he's most known for. 
<laughs> uh, let's see his filmography. Lost. Okay. Super 8. I've never seen that. Mission Impossible. Uh, is that Ghost? Ghostbusters? Oh, no, it's Mission Impossible 3. Armageddon. I'm not like I mean, this is going. Nah, know. Armageddon's a good movie. Did you know that <clears throat> it took the movie Apocalypse Now five years to edit? No, I didn't know that. How crazy is that? Five years, this guy was just sitting in front of a computer like, yeah, paste. <laughs> yeah, dude. What a crazy editing life. is so hard. I and know. I feel like it doesn't need to be. <laughs> no, it does. It does need to be. We just aired, um, our, <clears throat> my group just aired a documentary for our documentary class. And let me tell you, the editing process is strenuous. I, I'd be like, <laughs> okay, what do we got? Like 17 minutes in? And like, two. We are two minutes into the film after the editing. It's pretty so crazy. So how, how much film did you guys use? How much base footage? It was like eight hours of film that were sifted through for a 10 minute movie. It's pretty crazy. Okay, well this makes a little bit more sense. He also directed Star Trek Into Darkness. Okay. Ah, oh, you know what? If that rings a bell. You know, I'm not really, I agree with you though, um, J.J. Abrams, I'm not looking at his like... The pedigree doesn't fit Star Wars. Well, he worked with Spielberg on Super 8, so that, that is reassuring. I think I remember seeing that movie, it was like a bunch of kids who like wander into an alien, an alien front on Earth or something. Yeah. Wasn't good. I'm at like, least the characters, Luke, Han, and Leia will be in Star Wars The Force Awakens. From the originals? From the originals, yes. Mark Hamill, mm -hmm. Carrie Fisher, Harrison Ford are in the movie. So <laughs> this is good because now this, these, these characters can bless the new cast with their presence in this movie. Because otherwise, how would there be three more movies after these three movies? Mm -hmm. You know? They will do that. And they need gotta to have some... Gotta pass the baton. Gotta Keep pass going. the baton, exactly. You have to have a, some connection. Some Kevin Bacon-like seven degrees of separation connection to the original cast. Oh man, imagine getting grilled by Harrison Ford. You're like a young up-and-coming actor. This I is don't like think first... Harrison Ford grills people. Oh, I, th I think he's good. Well, just like you said, to keep the good legacy going, and he's probably like, Rrr. you think that's how we did it? Harrison Ford <laughs> once said that Han Solo was a boring character and he right. wished that he died in the movie. <laughs> He it's said that he wished that George Lucas killed Han Solo in the movie so that he could have done that. Probably because Harrison Ford like is Han Solo in real life. There, there's probably no acting for him. He's like, I don't want to do this. I'm just acting like myself on a Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> He's a space smuggler. Yeah, well, just his, you know, his personality. His, yeah, I got you. Yeah. I mean, I think Han Solo is great. Yeah, I, it doesn't, so he doesn't Ford. make sense as a character, though, because, okay, in the one scene... You know, he's just like, we're supposed to believe he's this smuggler, only cares about himself, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, what? Like, what really happens that makes him stay? I don't get that. You know, he's like, at one point, he's going to leave. And then Chewie's like, oh. He falls in love. Nah, you think? But he came back at the perfect time to save Luke in the battle. You know, like, that's so dangerous. He's got a, he's got a heart of gold. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> they, if you're going to enter a battle, a space battle, nonetheless... Attacking the Death Star. Doesn't yeah. he owe his life to Luke because he got him out of the, the chamber? <laughs> that was in the second movie, The Empire Strikes Back. Okay, so what are you talking about? The first one? Yeah, the first one. When well, he comes back to save Luke one? when they blow up the Death Star the first time. Alright. All right. When's Shake Day getting here? <laughs> <laughs> Should be seven minutes from now, hopefully. Sounds good. That's stretching. It might be like 8 o'clock. So yeah, man, um, I, had, I had a weird situation. So I had somebody in my class, he was like, yo, can I look at your paper? Like, just, he's doing a different subject entirely, but I guess he wanted to see how I structured mine. And I just was like, nah. You said no? I said no. Why? Because the teacher in question is always talking about plagiarism. plagiarism. Yeah. Always, like beating it like a dead horse. And I already got my draft grade back for this paper. I got an 88 on the draft. Okay. So I could get an 88 and he said he grades the drafts like he grades the paper, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, I, like, I'm, I'm good, you know, I'm, I'm walking to the touchdown, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I caught the ball, I'm in the end zone. So this, it's like, this I'm, not fumb fella. I'm not fumbling, I'm not like... This poor guy, he just takes a look at one of your writings one day, and he sees, hey, this kid's a good writer, what do all great writers do? They take from others, so let me just, you know, I'm not taking, I just want to know what <laughs> you're... <laughs> <laughs> I was trying not to call and fill up my mouth and then it came out of my head. Oh boy, that was graceful. <laughs> Anyways, 
That's really strong. Um, we need a cough button, by the way. Sometimes you cough it on the mic all the time. You're like, no, no, I turned it away. Okay. Definitely not. Okay. Anyways, um, yeah, I think you should have totally just given this kid like a little tip here and there. <laughs> I did. In down the paragraphs. Yeah, I, I was like, I said to him, yo, all I did was I went on Wikipedia to get the basic outline. I read all that first. Oh, so you gave him some, some tips. Yeah, and then I was like, and then I went to the bottom of Wikipedia and I found all the sources they used. I clicked on the most relevant ones. Then I went to Google Scholar and searched the same topic under scholarly results, found those sources, and then I took a little bit from each one, made my paper really great. That's all you gotta do. I'm like, I, don't, I don't understand why people haven't caught on to the uh, every source you ever need for a topic is at the bottom of a Wikipedia of the topic you look up. You don't have to like necessarily look through the Wikipedia. You know what's funny, thing, man? But the sources are through all there. sources is also really easy. Like Googling sources is also know. very. You know, <laughs> like not only are they all at the bottom of Wikipedia, not only do you not have a library reference lady like who you can go to and be like, "Hey, this is the subject of my paper." I need primary sources. Okay, content. let's search this. Yeah, yeah they're, they're more than happy for to help you. They do it with such a big grin on their face. They're so happy to do Dude, it. Dude, the library like, is lady so Thank you for your She's service. She's so hot, too. <laughs> which one? Uh, I'm not getting to that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't tell you which one. Yeah, so it's, like a, it's, like a, it's like a hidden book. You gotta just peer around the library, looking around until you find it. I don't even go to the library anymore. I go to TETC, and I go in those computer labs. It is bliss. You like that? That's yeah. your spot? Yeah. Well, not during finals week. I'll go to the library that's my study spot mm -hmm. i'll go to the top floor computer lab yeah. back right corner or if it is finals week and that place is crowded with a bunch of farting students <laughs> students <laughs> you know what i find whenever i'm in the library even in the computer lab i can like sense all the minds all in one place like all firing away and it's like it's, it's not just, good sometimes it, it gets in the like way of my electric field of knowledge protruding you know what i'm saying 110 percent. i can't do it dude i went to uh the room right outside of the studio. There's a bunch of computers, uh, and no one ever uses them because mm -hmm. why would you come all the way up above Cool Beans to right. to study? Mm -hmm. And yeah, no one was ever there. So then I sit down. I'm at the computer, and this kid walks up and he goes, uh, he like walks straight up to me. Like I'm stuck. I'm typing a paper, right? I got my headphones in. He walks straight up to me and goes, Hey, uh, do you know if like, stop? What did he say? He was like, Do you know if we're allowed to use these computers? Maybe is that what he said? I don't know, I but think, I think we met the same kid. Because <laughs> yeah, he's like, hey, do you know like, if we're allowed to use these? I'm like, and I was like, oh, yeah, man, like you're allowed to use them. Like, he's like, this is going to be open all night or something. And I was like, yeah, 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 that's fine. He's like, all right, yeah, because like, I was thinking, like, no one's using them, and it's finals week, so like, I might as well. I'm like, yeah, are we friends? Like, can you stop talking to me, please? Like, <laughs> like do I know you? Uh, I came here to get away from my friends, okay? <laughs> Not to make new friends. I came here because I wanted to be alone to do this paper. My girlfriend's at home. She's snapshotting me for two seconds. She wants me to come home so I can get my paper right there and be distracted yeah. by her. You want to distract me too? It's pretty selfish of you. Yeah. And you're making me selfish because now I'm leaving the house. My girlfriend's like, oh, what? You can't. You don't want to be distracted by me, but you can go be distracted by some stranger. You know what I mean? <laughs> you make me look like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which red, one? red, 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 red. To the right, to the right. Uh, it's probably too late. <laughs> <laughs> I had the, uh, right. had the swear button there. Got into a little steamy rant. Sorry. We could keep that on air. Yeah. This is not our normal show. So technically, I am not. Is. No, it's Wednesday. We usually do the show Tuesday and Thursday. Oh, I forgot too. I totally forgot. Wow. So yeah. A little treat for you guys out there. Except we didn't do it yesterday. So <laughs> we didn't do the show yesterday. Not, so. not getting extra sauce on it. Whatever. But uh, what I was saying is that so he comes up and he asks, he asks me, he's like, yeah, can I like. Can I use the computer behind him? Like, yeah. So then, if I tell him that it's okay to use these computers, I mean, it should have told him that I either didn't care or didn't know by yeah. the fact that I was on the computer already. Right. So he sits down and then he goes, uh, would, you, would it bother me if I sat down behind you? Like, because like, like they're back to back. <laughs> the computers are back to back. I'm like, no, I don't care. Just let me alone. So he sits oh down, right? God. And then he gets himself all set up, pulls out his laptop, pulls out his chargers, logs into his computer. He's behind me. And I'm like uh, on the computer facing it, like still doing my work, not paying attention to him. Then he goes, he like taps me on the shoulder. I'm like, oh, no. I turn around, oh, I'm like, no. dude, seriously. <laughs> like, I'm trying to write a philosophy paper on the idea of the holy. It's like, <laughs> the numinous is a numinous. It's like crazy. It's not like easy to write about at all. And I'm trying to like focus on each sentence and read it carefully. And then, you know, this kid, he goes, um, how long are you going to be here? <laughs> oh, I'm like, what kind of riddle is that, oh, dude? Yeah. I, I don't know. New philosophy, kill everyone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, I was like, literally looking at him like annoyed. I'm like, I had, I took my headphone out to like look at him like, 
and then they can see my face. It's an expression of sincere annoyance. <laughs> I was like, yeah, he's like, how long are you going to be here? I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, why Why are you asking me Can this? you just look at my backpack and like, he goes, when I get a toaster <laughs> strudel? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like, I have to run home real quick. I'm just going to leave all my stuff here. I'm like, no, no. I was like, absolutely not. I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I was like, I was like, dude, no, I'm not doing that. Like, I'm not, I don't know you. I'm not watching your stuff. And I'm about to leave. You go get a coffee myself. Like, no. Then I turned around and I didn't talk to him for the society. Did you do you see his face? Did he like was he very flush after that? Uh, I hope he was very embarrassed. Because oh, <laughs> he should have been. He should have been very embarrassed. I hope he wasn't embarrassed, but he learned something. But he should not have been embarrassed as the other group of people that so rudely interrupted my study session. So there oh, were here we go. We're just having a bad run of luck, huh? So there were three co- and it's amazing that I was able to still get my paper done. I just put my headphones on. I had big soul headphones, they cover your whole ear. I put them on. I, you know, I didn't even play any music. I just put them on. <laughs> I do that too sometimes. I know exactly what you're Cause doing. Because, like, the music was distracting me, so I just was yeah. like, I'm going to muffle these girls' annoying voices. Oh, no. So these three chicks, uh, in some uh, sort of organization. Uh, chicks. Right? Chicks. Yeah, they're chicks. Women. The females. I don't know that they were women. Say I don't know that they were fully females. mature females. <laughs> so I think we're just going to call them chicks. They're uh, not. I'm just kidding. Call them chicks. Call them so, chicks. <laughs> They they were in some sort of organization, maybe, maybe Greek organization, right? They're planning something. They're, right. And I think we should do this. And then and they're just going off all about it, like, and they're getting excited, and they're talking louder, and they are, um, you know, not really understanding that there are people in the area doing work, and that their little fun planning session for whatever event they're doing, although productive as it may be to them, yes, <laughs> is actually not in the classification of like reasons for me to have to. Focus harder on my paper and it inhibits block you the general out. Populace. Yeah, I mean it's a simple thing, you know. It's like it, are the things that I'm doing right now having an impact that is negative towards the people around anyone me? Anyone else? Towards anyone the, the, else? How about no, not anyone else. We'll say the people around me, because anyone else. Okay, so these shoes that I'm wearing are made in Taiwan by some kid getting two dollars an hour, probably. I don't know LL Bean's practices, but <laughs> my point is. <laughs> Not to disparage L.L. Bean, I don't know what their practices are, but I'm saying that's the meme, right? That's the social, you know, cultural, oh, Nike pays sweatshop kids a penny right. a day. Like, oh, they're jumping off the roofs of Foxconn. What are we with this? <laughs> what is, so if, what, so you can't worry about people who aren't around you all the time because then, you know, your day-to-day actions, you have to look at every company that provides every single thing around you. Oh, I'm, you know I'm what I mean? not saying that at all. So I'm saying we, we can at least say the people around you. You know, we, we can at least say that your actions, you know, because we all, all right. yeah, look. I agree. Okay. Sometimes okay. I'm in the front yard with my hairspray can and I'm just ruining the ozone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I don't care because. We're, I, in a, we're in an El Nino anyway. It doesn't matter. We're in an El Nino. <laughs> <laughs> Global warming might make my kids into Jon Snow at the wall, but for me, I'm going to be playing beach volleyball in what is now New York. It's all right. It's an El Nino. It's natural and we're going to go back to normal pretty soon. So live it up. It's nice for now. All right. So. Talk about people, or are these girls eventually talking about? Were they like creating a homeless shelter? Or they, 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 as a marketing major, as a marketing major, I could have walked over to their table and solved all their problems that they were talking about in about two seconds. Okay, because yeah. their marketing ideas were garbage. <laughs> I'm calling them out right now on their marketing ideas, garbage. <laughs> Most obvious, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like they, were, they, were, they were trying to placate people. Like they were trying to give the people what they want, but in a way that's like, kind of like lazy. You know, okay. like they were just pulling out. Uh, things that are like popular in today's culture very like sloppily and throwing them on to like a theme for like a party that they were gonna have or like a theme for like a uh, gravitate or something like that you know what I mean Talking just, parties. so that was annoying well, just so from a marketing standpoint it was annoying me that their ideas were bad right and then it was annoying me how loud they were it was annoying me that I could hear them at all so clearly you know what I mean like just a big nuisance yeah big annoyance it's like Ernest from Ernest Goes to Christmas dude I was watching that movie last night he's this character and he goes you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I just keep saying, you know what I mean? <laughs> but anyway, they're just being rude, you know? And I wanted to go up to them and say, very calmly, you're being very rude, I'm trying to do it here, but I know what response I would have been met with. Mm-hmm. I'm the jerk. I'm the mm-hmm. guy who's coming up to them and deserves to have his, have their, you know, eyes rolled at me. To have them say, sorry, and then for me to walk back to my computer and hear them start snickering and laughing and talking, right, talking right. crap about me. Right. When I'm just, they didn't even know I was there probably. I was just doing my, my, my own business, you know? Yeah. So, unfair But they society. didn't, but the thing is, they did know I was there. Because they saw me. 
so it doesn't matter. I'm saying they were acting as if they didn't know I was there, but they did know I was there. I saw them see me. They all saw me. We made eye contact. You have the mindset of a psychopath. <laughs> You're so... Everyone's out to get me. Everyone's out. Ah, ah. <laughs> well, put it this way. The kid that was behind me that so rudely interrupted me felt so, you know, he felt his line was so crossed by these girls that he left. And I knew that was why he left. Because he left, you at, the peak, tell. He left at the peak of their cackling. Right. You know, like, they were like, ah! And he was like, just got up immediately, started, you know, like, started frustrating and right, packing right. up his backpack, like, you know why he left. Stood he up just very abruptly. There. Yeah. 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 So he didn't have headphones. So I put my headphones on. I was already almost finished my paper, so I was fine. But I really did just feel like, I, and I didn't want to do it with, like, the intention of them, like, thinking about the actions and being better. I just wanted to ruin their day. Like, I just wanted to walk up and be like, Yo, you're all annoying. Um, you're, you're not important. The thing you're doing right now, also not important. And I hope that you all have a miserable rest of your day. <laughs> well, that's terrible. Really terrible. Is it though? Is it though? Because they really Awful ruined my. Thing to say. Awful thing to say. <laughs> Luke's putting his foot down. Put that's foot the end of it. Whatever. Uh, all right. Where anybody I, annoy where, you lately? Have anybody come up to you during finals week and just like... I think the wait, the thing is that during finals week, during the end of the semester, everybody has this rushed sense of entitlement where I'm in a hurry. I have important things to get done before the end of the semester and you're in my way. So therefore, you need to move. Uh, you know, it's like, <laughs> we're like, move out of the way for me. You know, I'm having a rough day. I have a final at 1045 a.m. Yeah, that's what I got today. That's exactly what I got. And, but yeah, and no. it's 6 a.m. And, and you're up doing a radio show. Like, mm-hmm. you don't care. You're not like, you know, th- these same people that have this mentality would wake up at 9.30 for the 10.45. Hey, yeah, man, I'm interviewing the mayor. This is pretty big stuff to me. It's Maybe about. you're interviewing the mayor. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I have confidence. It's 7.30 and I have a text. Let's see. Nope, oh, not from Jake Doe. Ah. Well, anyways, no, I haven't really had anyone annoying me about finals like I said I really go into TTC I go in the back row if possible of the uh, free computer lab and I just chill out there with my headphones on and nobody really uh nobody really says much in there I mean sometimes you'll get the occasional chatter between two but outside of that there'll be a couple times this hasn't happened so far in finals week where someone will pick up a phone and have a full-on conversation I'll be it'll be like a minute two minutes but it'll be like regular talking voice if not louder. What room is this? TTC Computer Lab? Yes. Now, I would say that that room is not 100% phone-free. That's not a phone-free zone. That is exactly what you just said. Oh, Jake Day's on his way. Nice. So, uh, yeah, that is exactly what you just said, I think. It's a, it's a room where, you know, it's obviously encouraged to be quiet, but if you, you know, if you need to take a quick one or two minute phone call, that's fine. Mm-hmm. You know, or if somebody comes in and you're working together on one computer for a little bit quietly, like, that's fine. It didn't push me off the edge. It was fine. Whatever. Nah. So you got nothing? I got nothing. Yeah. Everyone treats me with respect because I give it right back at them. Because you give it right back at them? Oh, yeah. What if somebody doesn't treat you with respect? Then do you hit them with a little sauce ball? No, then I give them my other cheek because that's what you're supposed to do in the Judeo-Christian thought process. Yeah, that hippie Jesus probably got a lot of wedges. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you. How dare you, sir. Well, anyways, if you're just tuning in, this is the Daniel Bittman Show. It's December 16th on a Wednesday. It's a little bit chilly out there, but we're going to warm you up with a little conversation with the mayor. I'm super excited, dude. I'm really excited. I'm excited, too. It's going to be nice to talk to him about a month after he got elected. We talked to him on the day of the election, Mm -hmm. so we didn't really get to talk about anything that he had done as mayor. We only talked about things he was going to do. So now we're one month in. We're going to make him eat his words. Mm -hmm. We're going to say, Jake, you said you were going to do this. Did you do it? It's been a month. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a month. Where is the movie theater uh, we talked about? Mr. Day, hello. <laughs> Jake, it's been a month. Um, why isn't the economy better? <laughs> <laughs> Should that be the first question? <laughs> so, Jake, well, it's been a month. Uh, where is my hoverboard? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you don't give him any hints of what is to come in the interview. Hopefully he's, he's not listening, listening right, right now. Nice. It's been fun to Jake Day. He's listening to Satellite Radio like a boss. Mm. If I know Jake Day, he's coming. The song, prepared. like a boss. He's listening he, to he's, like a boss. He's coming prepared. He's gonna be listening to this right now because he wants to get a little inside information on how he's gonna succeed in the interview and not look like a fool. If you were gonna go do an interview, would you watch the previous interviews that that person had done? Oh yeah, you gotta know the flavor of what's going on. Like, is he hot today? Is he kind of chilling out? The interviewer, I should say. I think if you do that, you're kind of 
A psycho? No, training <laughs> your mind. Okay, like, say you want to go on Anderson Cooper, right? And mm-hmm. then you start watching a bunch of Anderson Cooper interviews, and you start getting, like, dirt on Anderson Cooper. Where does that end? You know, what? Let's say you have a week to figure this out before the interview. How much information are you going to find out about Anderson Cooper in a week, dude? You know what I mean? Huh. He has an episode of his show every single day. Like, it's really going to get a full, a full, well-rounded opinion about Anderson Cooper unless you, you know, I think wing it. My method has always been wing it. Go in and just... Well, that's why you're not a politician. Shoot from the hip. Politicians, they always know the next move. Very Richard Nixon-esque. Somebody said, uh, if you're a lawyer, never ask a question that you don't know the answer to in court. It's never from, ask a question that you don't know the answer to. It's from a movie with John Travolta. John Travolta. <laughs> <laughs> Famous Scientologist, John Travolta. He's a Scientologist? Oh, yeah. He did that movie Battlefield Earth. That's about Scientology. Yeah, whatever. So John Travolta was one of the first Scientologists. He was one of like the first celebrities to come out and be like their poster boy. He was a poster boy for it. Before Tom Cruise or after? Before. Huh? Okay. But Tom... Respect. That, yeah. Dude, I know a lot about Scientology. Too much. Too much. Don't even get us started. We're okay. gonna go okay. down the We don't need to talk about Scientology. Ooh. But if anybody's interested in joining the Church of Scientology, 410-548-4760, we can uh, get your feet level measured and... You know, we can see how to move forward in the process. Yeah. A good morning text from my girlfriend. My heart is warmed. Ah. Yeah. Bet you don't get those, son. <laughs> I get good morning breakfast. <laughs> Much better. Ah. The anxiety. So what do you think? The what? calm before the storm. When you and your girlfriend live together, are you going to live with her after college, you think? Oh, get Right. Yeah, I mean, at some point, gonna move in. Not right? like right after, because I'm, um, you know. So that's, how do you, that's not feasible. How do you plan on? Oh uh, no, uh, no, pulling no, your no, side. No, no, what? No, 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 we're not doing this. We're not doing this, <laughs> especially not on the air. You're I, a messy I, I, guy. I, I, I'm just wondering. I'm not a messy guy. You're listen, kind of messy. Okay, listen, buddy. If you weren't living with your girlfriend, you'd be living in a S H I T hole. Okay. <laughs> Okay, don't, is that don't act all high and mighty just because your girlfriend does your dishes and cleans your room and all that. Because you're, you're the clean guy. I face oh, a okay. lot of pressure by my girlfriend to clean, to do yeah, my right. own laundry. Every, every guy does and every guy gets cleaner. It's not a parallel universe or anything like that. Like, <laughs> get out of here. You I'm, are just as grimy. Like, don't I'm even, not get, just me, as don't even get me started on this. Oh, okay, continue with your question. Where are we going with this? I just was gonna say, like, maybe are you gonna like be able to handle it? Like, are you okay. gonna <laughs> hand review over? <laughs> so Jake Day's gonna be on the show, everybody. Let's go to a song. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. You wanna go over a song? All right, fine. We'll go over a song. One song and then we'll Nirvana, go. come as you are. Jake Day, come as you are. Leave a little bit different. <laughs> 